I've recommended sitcoms, dramas, cartoons, mockumentaries, a documentary, but today's show is a whole different beast. Welcome to a world of bloody evolution with the anime-inspired internet series, Ruby. Ruby Rose. What is an adorable girl such as yourself doing at a school designed to train warriors? I want to be a huntress. You want to slay monsters? Ruby was the brainchild of geek animator Monty Ohm, who tragically passed away about a year ago, and Rooster Teeth Productions, best known for Red vs. Blue. If you let the show's low budget and internet roots turn you away, then you're going to be missing out on some of the greatest music, action, and art design currently being produced. You have traveled here today in search of knowledge, to hone your craft and acquire new skills. But your time at this school will prove that knowledge can only carry you so far. It is up to you to take the first step. Set in the world of Remnant, where humans are hunted by creatures known as the Grimm, Ruby follows students Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang as they attend Beacon Academy with the goal of becoming Huntresses, those who guard humanity from the Grimm. Together, the four make up Team RWBY, or Ruby. Yes, it's a little confusing initially, but you'll get over it. Behind the scenes, however, sinister forces are operating in the shadows. Over time, the show transforms from a girls in training story to an underground revolution thriller. The first reason you should watch Ruby is because of the sheer creativity on display. The art design is stunning, with colorful new backgrounds and memorable character and costume designs every week. You can feel the fun that the creators are having with the show. Great care has been placed into how the show looks on a conceptual level, which makes up for some of the animation issues I'll get to later. The creativity extends all the way to the action sequences, which are why you should really watch Ruby in the first place. Action choreography was Monty Ohm's specialty in his prior works, and his talents are in full display here in Ruby. Every character flips around without any regard for gravity or physics, taking full advantage of the possibilities of animation. Additionally, each character has a unique multi-purpose weapon, such as Ruby Rose's scythe that doubles as an XXL shotgun. Team Ruby is joined by a wide range of characters at Beacon Academy, including the warrior Pira, helpless comic relief Jean, and staff such as Professors Ozpin and Glinda. So, what's your name? I'm Weiss. Blake. Yang. Jean. Pira. Rin. Nora! Great, the gang's all here. Now we could die together. Now, if you're wondering if these characters seem like they're based off figures from folklore and fairy tales, you are correct. Ruby takes as much inspiration from anime as it does from fairy tales in how it tells its story. The voice acting, while not top of the line, starts off okay and improves as the show progresses. Initially, the main voices come off as stiff, but as the actors settle into their characters and the writing improves, the four leads sound natural by the second volume. Lindsay Jones, however, as Ruby Rose, is a highlight off the bat, finding the sweet spot between innocence, energy, and shyness that makes Ruby such an endearing lead. Grey Haddock as the villain Torchwick, Shannon McCormick as Ozpin, and former Edward Elric Vic Menyana as a new character in the third volume are other vocal highlights. Perhaps Ruby's greatest asset over other animes, fairy tales, and TV programs as a whole is the phenomenal soundtrack created by Jeff Williams. William's instrumentals and indie rock songs with vocals from his daughter Casey Lee stand on their own as a work of art, but when combined with Ruby's art design and action make for a great viewing experience. Then there's the show's humor, which mostly comes from the mixed match of all the characters and can be a bit childish at times, but in a warm, fuzzy way. We've got a world-renowned fighter on our team, what's basically a ninja, I can bench five of me, John! We've trained all year, our weapons are awesome! Glinda barely yells at us anymore! And, uh... John! Are you gonna take that? She's not wrong. There's also plenty of slapstick and visual humor as well, taking advantage of the possibilities of animation. All that said, Ruby isn't perfect. In fact, it was very flawed at first. The initial animation was... Well, downright ugly at times, and the voice acting, like I mentioned, was lackluster at the start. 
The show suffered pacing problems thanks to four to six minute episodes, pointless subplots, little character development until the end of the first volume, and very forced plot elements that become less important in the second and third volumes. Really, the best assets of the first volume are its music, art design, and action sequences. The production values improved greatly in the second volume, as did the writing and storytelling. The episodes became longer, with less episodes to produce. Although the overall narrative did not move forward as much as some hoped, all the subplots were relevant and helped develop the characters beyond their initial caricatures. In hindsight, however, this volume spent significant time setting up the chess pieces for the show's third volume, which is when the show truly became great with a single focused narrative, beautiful animation, and top-notch voice acting, in addition to the still great music and action sequences from before. All of this despite the loss of the show's creative drive, Monty Ohm. While the show is amateurish in its first volume, by the third volume it became a truly professional piece of art. I wonder who's gonna win. As if we didn't already know. Oh, come now. Even if you know how a story ends, that doesn't make it any less fun to watch. Ruby's first volume is about two hours long and the second volume about two and a half, so you can easily catch up on the show in a single day. However, if you truly cannot stand the low production values of the first volume, I guess you can get away with watching the first three episodes and the last two episodes, which are about 25 minutes uh, in those groups, so the first 25 minutes and the last 25 if you're watching on Netflix, and then go right up ahead to volume two where the production values improve. I still recommend watching the entire first and second volumes because it'll help build up your emotional investment in the characters and the payoff in the third volume will be even greater. All three volumes can be watched on RoosterTeeth.com and Crunchyroll. Additionally, the first two volumes can be found on Netflix in movie formats. The third volume is currently airing on Rooster Teeth and will conclude in a couple weeks. New episodes debut over the weekend. And that's all I've got. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please, let's have a conversation in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe if you have not already done so, and stay tuned for more here on CV Junkie.